Hi, I'm Mary Hamill. Today I'd like to explain one of our climate change activities. It involves students looking at climate change from many different perspectives. Before the students came to class, they had already read this handout on debate and dialogue. They also researched a character that they would portray during the activity and filled out this worksheet to help them prepare. To run this activity, start by setting the stage for dialogue and explaining how the conversation is run and what the rules are. You cooperate with somebody on something. How is it different? Are you trying to fight each other and argue? Yeah, you're trying to work together. Share ideas, build off each other's ideas. The way it works is kind of unusual. Anybody in this room can join the conversation at any time. Okay, You can say whatever you want. You can join the conversation. You come and you add your ideas. The one rule is you have to be sitting at one of these four chairs when you do it. So when you're back where you're sitting now, you're listening. When you're here, you're listening and talking. If all the chairs are taken and you want to come and join, what you can do is come down and just stand here like I am now. And that tells the people sitting at the chairs that you want to join the conversation. They should think about whether they need to still be in that chair or maybe they want to give it up for you to take it. And you can always come back. If you've sat there, you can come back again. Okay. If somebody is sitting there like, let's say Lindsay was sitting here and she just said something I was kind of interested in and wanted to talk to her about it, I would come and I would stand right behind Lindsay. Now let's join a class from Brookfield Central High School as they start their conversation. As seen here, the conversation may start slowly. <laughs> if you just wait and let the silence sit there, someone will step up to fill it. So how's life? <laughs> you got a first thing to talk. How do I start? How do I start off? Go ahead and start talking. Quinn, I like what you're thinking. <laughs> so how does zookeepers, climate affect zookeepers? Um, they might have to like change the habitats of where the animals stay because it's getting warmer. Yeah. <laughs> How about scuba diving? <laughs> um, well, when it gets too warm out, it can disturb the coral reefs, which the coral reefs provide like an environment for fishes. Yeah. Or you can like, like you know, like the Shire, like. The oh, landfill, yeah. we uh, yeah. can use like yeah. all the gases that come from there as mm -hmm. to like heat our houses. Yeah. Or we could make that like a snowboard. Probably yeah. really expensive. And now uh, they're starting to make windmill farms that use electricity. And By five minutes later, yeah. things had started to pick up. More students were joining in, coming forward, and waiting for a chair to open so. up. Oh, Brad, you can. Oh, I'll jump in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at several points in the conversation to see how things can change. Oh. Um, yeah, I agree with what um, you were saying about like just the little things we can do to help and also just telling other people about it because I don't think a lot of people know about this and um, for them to start helping too. So basically like public awareness. Are you like the head of a paper company? Yes, I am. Well, I think that your company could um, use recycled paper to remake new paper. Or are you starting to look into that? And using more That's of that stuff instead of cutting down more trees, which releases more yeah. greenhouse gas in the air. Yeah, because I need the trees. By the end, the students were really no trying to make a difference. Get oxygen, enough oxygen. Mm -hmm. I need That's yeah. also a good point. Like at home, I know, at least at my home, right now we don't have a paper recycling bin. We have like a place for bottles and jars and stuff, but we don't have an actual paper recycling bin. So stuff like that, to get that into houses would be an important step too. Well, at yeah. my house, we have like a brown paper bag from the grocery store, like the big ones, mm -hmm. that have like Chairman Bob on them. <laughs> and <laughs> well, the thing is, is that people here are saying this is what we need to do, this is what we need to do. What most people don't seem to realize is you can't want to do something if you don't do it yourself. 
and things like this school and our recycling program, it almost fails because no one is willing to stand up and do it. If everybody yeah. changes their ways, then we can really make a difference in what's happening. Yeah. On an annual recycling day. So people just don't realize what they need to do, and that's why we're in the issue that we're at right now. the end, come back to close the conversation, debrief with the students, ask them what they learned and if anything surprised them, then have them fill out the second worksheet. Here are a few other tips. Give students incentives for joining the discussion, maybe extra credit or some prizes. Encourage your students to not just read from their worksheets, but to have a normal conversation, to ask questions of each other and have a real discussion. Students told us that they needed more time to research their roles, maybe give them several days or allow them to work in teams and help each other prepare. You and your students can find good resources on our e-appendix. Let us know your experiences with this and our other climate change activities. That way we can share your tips and ideas with other teachers. Thanks again to Dave Laurier and his students and thank you for teaching.